to the Srimad Bhagavatam class will be given by His Grace Keshavanand Prabhuji on uh, the verse 4.21.33 onwards. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, you are there on the call? Yes, 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 I am there. And I Hare think, uh, yeah, um, is, is, is my YouTube live coming? I mean, I mean so you have to check from your own side. So I have no idea. Dandrasthana okay, Prabhuji, so, uh, yeah. Dhan Bhattan, thank you so much Prabhuji for giving your valuable time and association in this uh, Bhakti Sangha conference session. We are really fortunate to have you on this call Prabhuji. Uh, okay. We will let you know one second Prabhuji if it is uh, right uh, yeah. available on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are discussing Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4, text 21, oh sorry, chapter 21, text 33, that's what the the text is. Uh, let me just offer obeisances and invocation, then we can start. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 421.33. Tameva Yuyam Bhajata Atma Vritti Bhir Mano Vacha Kaya Gunai Sukarmadhi Amayena Kama Dhuk. Angri Pankajam Yatha Adhikara Avasitar Thasidhayaha. So, translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is writing uh, Prithu Maharaj advises citizens engaging your mind, your words, your bodies, and the result of your occupational duties. And being always open minded, you should all render devotional service unto the Lord. According to your abilities and occupations in which you are situated, you should engage your service as a lotus feet of Supreme Self Divided without full confidence, with full confidence and without reservation. Very important. Then you will surely be successful in achieving the final objectives in your lives. Okay, I translate Prophet Vashila Prabhupada, Prabhupada Ki Jai. As stated in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Sukarmanatam Abhyarchaya. One has to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead by one's occupational duties. This necessitates accepting the principles of four varnas and four ashramas. Pitu Maharaj therefore says, Gunai Svakarmavi. This phrase explained in Bhagavad Gita. Chaturvanya Maya Srishtam Gunakarma Vibhagasya. The four castes, the Brahmins, Satriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras uh, where is it? are created by Supreme Personality of Godhead according to duties discharged in those modes. Person who is situated in mode of goodness certainly more intelligent than others. Therefore, he can practice the Brahmanical activities, namely speaking the truth, controlling senses, controlling the mind, remaining always clean, practicing tolerance, having full knowledge about oneself identity, and understanding devotional service. In this way, he engages himself in loving service of the Lord as an actual Brahmana. His aim to achieve the final interest of life is attained. Similarly, the Shatriya's duties are to give protection to the citizens to give all his possessions in charity to be strictly Vedic in management of the state affairs to be unafraid of the fight whatever there is an attack by enemies. In this way, Shatri can satisfy the Supreme Sant of God by his occupational duties. Similarly, a Vaishya can satisfy the Supreme Sant of God by properly executing his occupational duties, engaging himself in producing foodstuffs, giving protection to the cows and trading if necessary when there is an excess agricultural production. Hmm. Similarly, because Shudras do not have ample intelligence, they should simply engage as workers to serve as it is a social life. Everyone's aim should be to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God by engaging his mind in thinking all this of Krishna, his words and all this offering prayers to the Lord or preaching about the Lord's of Lord, his body in executing the service required to satisfy the Lord. As the four divisions within the body, the head, the arm, the belly and the legs, similarly human society taken as a whole is divided into four castes, classes of men according to the Material qualification and occupational duties. Does the Brahmanical intelligent man have to execute duty of the head? Shatriya must fulfill duty of the arm. The Vaishyas the class must fulfill duty of belly, and the Shudras must fulfill the duty of the legs. In executing the prescribed duties of life, no one is higher or lower, and there are such divisions higher and lower. But since there is actually a common interest to satisfy the Supreme Sight of God, there are no distinctions between them. Question may be raised that since Lord is supposed to be worshipped by great demigods like Lord Brahma, Shiva and others, how an ordinary human being on this planet serve him? 
क्लियरली एक्सप्लेन पृथ्वी महाराज बाई यूजिंग द वर्ड यथा अधिकार अकॉर्डिंग टू वन एबिलिटी वन सिंसेल एग्जीक्यूट ऑक्यूपेशन ड्यूटी दैट विल बी सफिशियंट वन डज नॉट नीड टू बिकम लाइक लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा शिवा इंदिरा लॉर्ड चैतन्य रामन जी चारे उस कैफ्लेटे सर्निंग पार अप Our even a shudra who is in the rest of the stage of life, according to material qualities, can achieve the same success. Anyone can become successful in devotional service provided this displays no duplicity. Explained here that one must be very frank and open-minded. Amaiya na ha. To be situated in lower status of life is not a disqualification for success in devotional service. The only qualification is whether one is brahmana, kshatriya, vaishya, shudra. He must be open, frank, free from reservations. Then, by performing his particular occupational duty. In the guidance of proper spiritual master, he can achieve the highest success in life. As confirmed by Lord Himself, Sri Aveshya Tatha Shudra Tiya Piyanti Param Vadim. Does not matter what one is, whether a Brahman, Chhatri, Vaishya, Shudra, or degraded woman. When engages himself seriously in devotion service, working with body, mind, intelligence, he is sure to be successful in going back home, back to God. It. The Lord Shri Tatha Shudra describes here as Kama Thu Angri Pankajam, because he has all power to fulfill the desires of everyone. The world is happy even in this life, because all the material existence we have many needs. All his material needs are satisfied, and when he has at last put his body, he goes back home, back to God without a doubt. Okay, long perfect, but to the point. So let me start. Om Agnana Timirandasya Agnana Janashala Gaya Chatshuri Tamiya Tasmay Shri Guru Namah. Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Samanti Namah Namaskar Sri Guru. गौरवाणी प्रचार ओके सो पृथ्वी महाराज इज इंस्ट्रक्टिंग पृथ्वी महाराज इज सेंग तमेव यूयम भजत आत्म वृत्ति फिर द होल आइडिया इज ही इज ट्राइंग टू से यू ऑल यूयम मीन्स यू ऑल भजत आत्मा दैट मीन्स यू ऑल सर्व Atma means here uh, the supreme Lord, your own supreme Lord. How you should serve by bhakti bhir. Bhakti bhir means by occupational duties, and that's what Prabhupada brings the point here. By occupational duties, that's the whole idea he's trying to bring in this Prabhupada. Now, um, uh, the whole point of occupational duties uh, that bhakti, and then it comes mano vacha kaya gunai sokarmani. Vritti and occupational. Vritti means uh, the whole point is by guna karma. Guna means qualities, and karma means occupation. So Prabhupada actually devotes a lot of this purport on this point on occupational duties, and he says here the interesting points he says. He says that well, to worship Supreme Personality Godhead, uh, one has to decide what kind of qualities he has and what he can do. That's the whole point there. So of course we have to do something in life, but the whole idea is we should be doing uh, we should be doing those activities according to our qualities. Otherwise we'll be frustrated. Just like in modern world, there's so many occupational duties. People go on to become doctors, engineers, and uh, whatever career. But the whole idea there is the whole aim is. Uh, money, that's all. But the but the aim of that duty is not neither to work according to the aim of the duty is 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 neither to work according to your own uh, qualities, first of all, your own interests, and second of all, the goal of the duty. Is money. It's not pleasing the supreme salary or it, and that's why people are frustrated. People do so many things in this life, and they're completely frustrated. And then, and then they because because they are not doing a thing, a duty which is according to their own interest. Can you just stop? Just uh, no, no. This is this. But this is for speaker. Otherwise, you have to hold okay. it. Then this. So no. So the so the whole idea is uh, the um, the uh, uh, people are uh, people are uh, really uh, stressed, tense, uncomfortable. Okay. 
Krishna. Now, now people, uh, uh, people are actually this is disturbing. For me. What, what is this? Yeah. Can we can we have the speaker here? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Some people were on mute, so you can continue. Sorry about that. So the the whole point is that uh, that uh, yeah, uh, why people are stressed and tense and anxiety? People say, okay, fine, you know, let's do some meditation, and then we can be relieved of stress. Or that there, there, there's psychological counselings. And people people are trying so much to remove stress, but the whole point is they are not trying to understand the problem. The problem is not that people are stressed. The problem is why stress is coming. and uh, people think okay stress is coming because we are working more than required or maybe we are working inside the the corporate and we don't have to go outside uh, sometimes so people at parks now now they are trying to make parks so that people can go in park and have relaxation or they are trying to provide more facilities but that's not the point there i mean to say if you are traveling in a in a bicycle and if we want to go from charlotte to raleigh in a cycle we will become stressed we it's so far or maybe i mean americans can go in cycle but if we want to go on bicycle from here to boston definitely it becomes stressed but then you might say okay how to release stress so so put some juice with yourself and put some take rest in between and or do something but then that will not solve the problem because new york is very far you need a car that's all that's sensible so the whole idea that's why krishna is saying uh, people are stressed not because of lack of facilities or overburden people are stressed because of adhikar the prabhupada is bringing the point of adhikar here people have to work according to the adhikar and that's uh, prabhupada brings this point and uh, yatha okay yeah. yeah adhikar the word the word comes here yatha adhikar avasthita so people have to know what are their limitations and what are their capacities first of all that is called guna it's their qualities so it, 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 there is a, there is a proverb it is said that there is a prayer it is said oh lord please give me the wisdom to know what is impossible for me to do and please give me the courage to to do what is possible that's our goal so uh, we have to recognize the limits it's not that we can become superman or uberman in the language of nietzsche we can do everything sky is the limit uh, don't get depressed you can achieve anything there are so many people i mean to say all management gurus they speak like that don't uh, there's no limit but there's a limit that's the whole idea there to to think that there's no limit to what we can do and we can achieve anything that's a demonic concept that's all right concept in fact this concept is is coming from nietzsche who was a philosopher he brought this concept that he brought the concept of uberman which basically means german uberman in english means superman he said we are all extraordinary our talents are hidden in us and because of social pressure these talents are they, they don't come out they don't they're not expressed anybody can do anything and people can go to the ultimate perfection of life that's what they went but the whole idea of perfection is also not good i i i i think yeah, 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 i think yeah, prabhupada brings this point here in the prophet you don't have to be perfect like brahma lord shiva ramanuja chaitanya mahaprabhu the whole idea is not to become perfect because the first thing is to have an idea to become perfect that itself is wrong krishna says every endeavor has a fault Krishna says there, there is there is no concept of perfection in this material world. People who are perfectionists ultimately they become stressed out, right? They they get brain brain hemorrhage, heart attacks, and and in fact and in fact that's the problem with all of us. Whatever we do, we try to find perfection, but that is wrong. Krishna doesn't say that. Krishna says don't try to find perfection. Try to find satisfaction. There's a difference there. if you are satisfied if people are satisfied by what you are doing that's okay you don't have to become perfect and that is mayavad uh, that's why everybody is preaching mayavad i mean to say people prabhupad was speaking against mayavad in his purports and when prabhupad was in america 
Prabhupada Gita and Bhagavatam is full of Mayavad. Prabhupada is just banging Mayavad. And I think Satapuja Prabhu or Satsuru Prabhu, they met Prabhupada and, and they said, Prabhupada, why are you talking about Mayavad again and again? We are not God. And uh, soul is different from uh, super soul. We are not one. Why is that? What's the relevance? Uh, they couldn't really understand. And when they went to India, really understood what Prabhupada was saying because everybody was saying, everybody was saying uh, that I'm God. But the whole point is, uh, when they came back to the West, after 30, 40 years, now we are understanding that everything is mine. I mean, to say all these people who are talking about you can do anything and you become perfect and you don't have limitations and faults, that's my avad. You're trying to become God. That's all. And you know, the society can become perfect. That's my avad. You're trying to make society by kuntha. That's not possible. It's all maya. It's all crazy my avad. So, uh, we, Krishna suggests, don't try to be after perfection because you have to admit the point that there will be faults in any work. And if you have a utopian thought that, okay, I'll do perfectly and every, everything will go perfectly, a foolish number one, that will never happen. You have, the one of the main principles of management is, uh, if you want to do good management, uh, the first golden rule is, nothing will be perfect. That's the rule. And the second rule is, everything will go wrong. <laughs> That's the rule. If you have this in mind, then you can do management properly. Because you know things will come not proper and then you will be ready for, you know, making things right. But if you think, okay, everything will be good and nothing will be at fault, then you'll be stressed out. Mm. So that's the nature of this word, Dukhali Mashashwatam. We forget Gita. Mashashwatam, it's temporary. Anything temporary is faulty. Dukhali, uh, there is fault. So uh, that's why Krishna says, Adhikar, he's, he's giving a very practical advice. Prithu Maharaj is giving a practical advice. Prithu Maharaj is speaking to his citizens, by the way, in this, in this verse. He's not giving a lecture to devotees. First thing, and of course, his citizens might be devotees, but at the same time, this is a very a social and a political advice. He's a king. He wants his citizens to be peaceful and happy so that they can devote their life to Supreme Asarathya Godhead. Now, at social level, how should be peaceful and happy? At individual level, this verse might not be required. Okay. Uh, why should I care about my qualities and occupation duties? I can sit, uh, so, so I can take a house in LA in Beverly Hills and then sit there nicely. I don't have to do anything with anybody. Uh, maybe somewhere a house in America. And do my chanting. So, and that's all. Finish. But that's not the whole point. If you are, if you have many people around, especially in Vaishnav, uh, we have a society, we have people, they are working, uh, and you have to decide uh, what service is to be given to whom, isn't it? That's the whole point. So in devotee society, non-devotee society, you are working outside also to earn money, but whatever you are doing there, you can't change those things very easily. That's not, you can't do that. You have a job. If you can take a job according to your interest, that's very nice. In fact, Americans do that. Right, Americans, they do what is of their interest and they earn money by it. So, musician, he's practicing music and then he, he earns by that. His, his occupational duty is according to his interest. Uh, Westerners are like that. And Bhakti Thakur says, why Western world is more advanced than India? Of course, India is a spiritual country. It should be the number one country. But why West is more advanced, Prabhupada says, because they are following one ashram. Bhakti no Thakur Mahavadis. And I read this in Chaitanya Shikshan Amrit. They are following one ashram. And I was thinking, uh, this is funny, I mean, to say, <laughs> we don't understand what is one ashram and how they are following. Bhakti no Thakur says, because everyone in the West, they are doing a occupational duty according to their qualities and interest. That's all. A person who is a person who is, oh, actually one, one person in Dallas, he came to our devotee's house and he was saying, uh, so, uh, so he was a plumber and, and he was saying to, um, to that devotee that, you know, that I'm happy and you know, I'm earning nicely and, uh, uh, and then I asked him, you know, I mean to say, you really want to do this job? 
because as indians you know we plumber is not a good job for us so he said well i like it and i i i i wanted to do this so i pursued this as a profession and i'm earning nicely and i'm happy that's all finished so uh, that's why in america it's like that and people respect the occupation it's not that they are not respected if somebody is a musician and a doctor i think they are given almost the same respect there might be some difference but they are given the same respect at least externally uh, so uh, then people are happy and society advances because if you are doing some duty according to your interest you become expert in that because it's natural talent that's the whole idea you work according to talent so that's what prithu maharaj is advising work according to your talent that's all and prithu says in my kingdom everybody will be given equal respect why because respect is given according to not according to their talent and their occupation duties but according to their sincerity in what they are doing that's that is the that is the benchmark respect and according especially in a spiritual uh, society respect is given because everybody is a devotee that's all so uh, that's why prithumara says you prithumara says well uh, there are four types of people everywhere either in non devotee society or devotee society it will always be there so we have to recognize as a leader as devotees we have to recognize what is the nature of which person and then we have to give them service according to that in fact that's required in fact in his con purpose says we have to bring one nation system otherwise people will be so stressed and tensed so either you can say varna ashram or you can say a practical system to manage society anything i mean to say both works it's the same so uh, prabhupada mentions here uh, prabhupada mentions from the gita chatur varna ma system guna karma bhava sha prabhupada says okay there are four divisions brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra according to krishna there are four types of people that's all why there are four types why not five types why not six types krishna says according to modes of nature uh the it can be classified into four types so a person who is situated in mode of goodness so there are three modes and there are four types of people so goodness is uh, people who are in goodness he is a brahmana prabhupada says person who is situated in goodness he is a brahmana now what happens in mode of goodness krishna says krishna says in mode of goodness that verse is there tatva satvam nirmala tvat prakashakam anavayam you know this bhagavad gita yeah. satva guna sir yeah satva guna definition tatva satvam nirmala tvat prakashakam anavayam and prabhupa says prakashakam prabhupa defines in mode of goodness all the senses are illumined with knowledge so when you are in mode of goodness automatically knowledge you start learning things and you become intelligent so brahmanas are naturally in mode of goodness i mean to say they people they naturally like to read to preach they, they their whole uh, their whole uh, tendencies to read and study and then uh, control of senses they like they like this concept of control of senses they like speaking truth uh, they like speaking controlling their mind they like doing austerities if you see a person like that and if he has such kind of qualities and talents then uh, he's a brahmana that's all he's a brahmana he a brahmana might be fearful that's one thing he might fear i mean to say if you ask brahmana to go to fight he might be very fearful <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that brahmana has to be fear he is fearless of death and birth but when Uh, practical fighting comes he is fearful because he is not trained he might die so uh, in that sense so in brahmana we don't look we look these qualities prabhupada says namely speaking the truth controlling senses i mean to say everybody wants to speak truth but brahmana will die and he will not speak a lie he is like that he is he is he has this tendency controlling senses uh, satri also has to control senses vaishya has to control senses brahmana for brahmana controlling senses and mind is is very interesting for him that that you see the whole point of ruchi it's interesting just like for vaishya uh, for him earning money is very interesting concept <laughs> that's how it goes bhaiya people 
or for brahmanas remaining always clean uh, austerity he likes to do austerity if you ask a brahmana uh, so i mean to say if you give some feasting to brahmana after some time he get frustrated because his natural tendency is to do austerities he will not be really satisfied and happy in eating feast daily after few days he will flip out that's all if you if, if you give a feasting to shatriya he may not not flip out flip out or vaishya they will not flip out they will keep on going but bhavana he says i have i want like all these things i want to eat less sleep less that's how his mind works so is a bhavana so such kind of person uh um he understands devotional service that's the main qualification he and because he's intelligent he understands deep concepts of devotional service and uh, uh, he has the ability to enter the subtle things so such kind of person if you find what his occupational duty should be okay in in society he should become a teacher that is if, if he wants to choose an occupation just like if you if, so if you ask for a career counseling to us if you find such a person okay so you ask him you can he can do teaching that's a very good job because teaching he likes to read and do austerities he can um, what does he can do what does he can do uh, pre pre teacher yeah teacher is a job basically for brahmana he can become a instructor in some college that he can do that's basically teaching yeah that's a job for brahmana uh he can also become a doctor doctor is a brahmana job because uh, he has to be i mean to say he should he should speak truth he should not exploit people he should have knowledge you have to read so much as a doctor so that these jobs he can take uh and then you have kshatriyas now brahmana is like head who thinks because he is intelligent he krishna has given him the gift of intelligence control of senses so he can enter subtle concepts in the knowledge and because krishna has given him knowledge so he should distribute knowledge that's all finish whatever god gives you you distribute that's the whole point um uh, krishna gives you to distribute krishna doesn't give you to keep it krishna wants to make your channel to benefit this entire world so he he okay he he has given you this gift use it in service of god so give this knowledge to others and make them devotees that's all that's what a brahmana should do then a kshatriya kshatriya is like arms and you see one thing arm is connected to the head by shoulder that's the whole point there so kshatriyas and brahmanas work together otherwise uh, no management can work so in any management there should be Uh, a knowledgeable person who can give knowledge and there should be shatriyas who can do some work who can execute that knowledge or you can say pen and sword go together you should have a pen you should have a sword by pen you make constitution by sword you maintain that constitution and that's how it goes so then kingdom kingdom uh, it moves on then kingdom goes on so uh so that's the whole point there and then you have uh, then you have uh, kshatriya kshatriya's duties is to give protection to citizens to give all possessions in charity to be strictly vedic in management of state affairs and to be unafraid to fight you see the point unafraid to fight it is not attacked by enemies kshatriya don't run away that's how kshatriya are so uh, oh this is going up, up up and down i think you have to close the curtain maybe it's it's it's, it's going up and down yeah 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 now it's good so so that's how uh, these uh, the kshatriyas so kshatriyas are kshatriyas kshatriyas have to have to uh, fight basically to protect devotees or maybe maybe people so the the whole idea if you find a person who is who is not afraid of things and who likes who likes to uh, who likes to do management that kind of person can be put in management that's all so 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 duty of satya is management and if in material world they can opt for occupations like military or maybe 
CEO or something like that they want to do. Uh, I, I, I've seen I've seen many CEOs who meet me, and they say we are completely stressed out. They can't handle things. That means they are not Shatrias. They don't have a talent to. The main talent of Shatrias is to basically take stress, a lot of stress, and not get disturbed. That was Ram. Ram was a Shatria. He he got he was in such a stressful situation. His wife got lost, and you know Subriva he ditched him as a friend. And uh, there were so many demons, uh, but he was not disturbed. He took a right decision. He didn't flip out. Most of us, uh, we manage. We might be managing ten, twelve people, and we flip out, and we become disturbed ourselves. Uh, that's as a shatriya. The whole point is not to get disturbed because things will be things are going around you, and they are pretty messed up things. Then you can't give proper decisions. So that's what shatriya is. He's trained. The main thing training of shatriya is controlling his mind. And that is why you see for brahmanas and shatriyas, their sadhana is very important. So people who are in management, they have to keep their sadhana properly. Otherwise. Their mind is not controlled, then they can't act properly. Even brahmanas, brahmanas are also very stressful because brahmanas, shatriyas has to have to deal with with people and situations. Brahmanas have to deal with ideas. And people have so many ideas; they have to convince them that they're thinking wrong. So shatriyas are working in the world of matter, uh, and brahmanas are working in the world of ideas, and both are very. Dangerous and stressful to counteract them. So uh, that's the shatriya, and then you have a vaishya. Vaishya can satisfy supreme personal order by properly executing of your vaishya duty. So shatriya is doing management for the people. That's very important. He's not managing people. He's managing for the people, for the devotees, to make a situation peaceful so that they can do devotional service. So that's why Krishna becomes satisfied. Brahman is giving knowledge for the devotees, so that what I mean to say, okay, fine. You cannot read books, so many because you don't have time, and you don't have so much intelligence to into subtle concepts. So we'll do homework for you. So Brahmanas are doing homework for all other three three levels, and he's teaching them. Shatriyas are trying to make situation peaceful, handle all management, and Vaishyas can satisfy supreme person of order by engaging himself in producing foodstuffs, protection to cows. Trading, Krishi go raksha vanishim. Trading, if necessary, when there is an excess of agricultural production. Now that's very important. Otherwise, generally, we don't trade. Otherwise, society should be self-sufficient. You produce, grow, and consume. That's how it goes. Trading is there if there is excess. Otherwise, why to trade? You don't need to trade because trading has a drawback. If you trade, if you if you if you give something, then people will also come to sell their own things. Am I right? You can't say no. Then they will say we will not trade with you. So, or if you go, you mix with people. When you mix with people and people mix with you, then your values go down. Am I right? So, so countries which uh, which which uh, actually countries which open immigration, just like Canada, you see they have opened immigration to so many people, and it's fully spoiled. People come. With their values, then values intermix, and then there is, you know, people uh, then start cheating because they're in different country, and then they have to earn money. People who are locals then they get disturbed. It becomes a mess. So in previous days, trading was allowed, but it was on a very limited scale. Generally, Vedic times there were villages. They used to grow, consume, and that's it. Finish. Uh, there was uh, there was trade, but the trade was a very very global level, very broad level, on a, on a very higher level, but on a, on, a, on a king's level, country level. Otherwise, locally there was no trade. But nowadays there is nowadays everything is on trade. Even local families are doing trades, and that's why people are frustrated. So vaishyas are like that. So if you find devotees who are good at selling and buying things, those kind of people are vaishyas. They should be involved in. Uh, in finance, for example, and then there are shudras. Uh, shudras don't have ample intelligence. Now this is interesting because if you tell anybody he's a shudra, he'll not accept it. <laughs> right? Okay, you're a shudra now. Uh, 
so they who is going to accept i'm a shudra but there are people who don't have much intelligence and that's the whole point if you're a devotee you should accept i don't have such kind of intelligence well he might say i have intelligence and i can work it out okay then give him a chance and then he'll get stressed he not be able to lead people and in fact in 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 spiritual society being a shudra is very conducive because brahmana kshatriyas and vaishya they can be proud of their knowledge of their power and of their money but shudra they have nothing so shudra in uh, in uh, in daivi varnashram in a varnashram uh, where is in a society of devotees it's the best thing because in society of devotees the principle is one is last he is the first in the eyes of god so and and you get to do vaishnava seva there is all vaishnavas shudras have to assist other 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 levels he is assistant i mean so he is uh, what do we say hmm i get a score runner or runner up runner up like no runner runner up if there is nobody okay then he is there you know to do things around that's shudra so i mean this is basically shudra means what shudra means one of the meaning which caste brahmanas they say shudra means sidanti sidanti means always weeping lamenting so he is lamenting na shoshati na kangshati brahmana is he doesn't think of past he doesn't lament on past and kangshati means he doesn't uh, he doesn't expect the impossible i mean to say generally people people define this verse na shoshati na kangshati as uh, he doesn't think of past and doesn't think of future that's absolute crazy i mean to so you have to think of future to plan so brahmana thinks of future but he doesn't expect the impossible that's what na kangshati is there and he thinks of the past because he has to learn from history what mistakes he do he doesn't lament what mistakes he has done but shudras are like that shudras they lament and then they they are uh, just thinking of something which is impossible trying to do something that's the whole point so um but the main uh, but the meaning of shudra is by the way according to vaishnava is is uh, is uh, uh, rudanti ra means rudanti sud means of course rudanti the whole idea is shudra is a person who weaves in separation of lot now if you want to become shudra that's very nice and this and we all want to become shudra that's what madhva says so shudra is is in very good place uh, i mean say you don't have to take you know not stressed you are serving vaishnava you chant your things and that's okay that's fine enough so shudras and vaishyas are like belly and legs so you see the point in a body hands and head are linked and belly and legs are linked in between there is a chest so chest separates hands and head and belly and legs so so shudra and brahmana should work together and shudras and vaishya should work together because if, if i mean to say as a as a as a vaishya you need agriculture and you need trade so you need help agriculture you can't do alone you need people to work manual labors and as a kshatriya and a brahmana they work together brahmanas give advice kshatriya is executed so that's why in devotional in spiritual society what how to do management management has you have to have two kind of people in management otherwise it will be failure and that's why wherever i mean to say there so many people fighting all around the globe management not successful why because in management you generally put people who are good at managing at managing but they're not good in knowledge you see most of the managers or temple presidents they are good at managing okay they are doing things but as far as knowledge is there they don't have because they don't have time to take knowledge because either they are congregation or they don't have interest in reading and they are in good at making temples or collecting money but uh, distributing money but the knowledge no so then people lose faith on such a leader because people if if a leader is not knowledgeable then people think he is exploiting us right so that's why 
Kshatriyas has to associate with Brahmanas. Because when Kshatriyas associate with Brahmanas, he gets knowledge. And that's how he becomes Raj Rishi. When he gets knowledge, then he can not only manage people, but he can give knowledge to people. And then people have faith, okay, this is a good person. He understands himself, what he's doing. So, uh, and he takes advices of Brahmanas, what to do. So that is why both has to work together. And Vaishyas and Shudras, they work together. And all of these four people, they work together in a society. And then things can be solved. So, I think ideally, uh, management people should take advice from sannyasis and brahmanas. But this doesn't happen, by the way. <laughs> it's something else is happening. Sannyasis are doing their own work. Brahmanas are doing their own. Management is doing their own. They are criticizing them. They are criticizing. It's, it's foolishness. It doesn't work like that. But Kshatriyas have a point to not accept brahmanas' uh, points. And Kshatriyas might, might say, see, 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 you're giving a theoretical answer. Practical things go something else. I mean, that, that's why there's a fight. But the whole point is, uh, that's the whole point. Brahmanas give the advice and suggestion. Satriyas have to come up with a solution to execute that advice. Because Brahmanas don't have a practical insight into all the practical situation. They can give advice. And, uh, like for example, Chanakya and Ashoka. Chanakya used to advise, Chanakya was a Brahman. And they conquered the whole world, you know, India. How? Because... Ashoka used to take all advices from Chanakya and then Chanakya said, you know, see, these are the principles. Now you decide how to execute these principles. I'm not going to tell you that. But you can't defy these principles. That's the whole point here. You can't defy it. You have to come up with a solution. Now you might say that's not practical, but the whole point is, in the name of practicality, if you destroy the principle, then you might be able to uh, manage your own uh, stuff and your own things but in the end it will get spoiled because the principle is destroyed so then things become destroyed so uh, that's why Kshatriyas don't have a foresight as Brahmanas have so they can see okay and, well, Kshatriyas can come up with a jugad you know jugad. <laughs> and that's practical things are patched but Brahmanas will tell you know what after 20 years you land in a big problem hmm. so don't do this so because Brahmanas have foresight. How? Because they are looking through the eyes of scriptures. Satriyas cannot look because they are not trained in scriptures. Satriyas are trained in fighting more. Uh, so of course Satriyas have knowledge but not as Brahmanas have. We are, we, are, we are all talking in a relative sense. So that's how it goes. So that is why uh, any society which has to work properly, Brahmanas are on top. And that why Satriyas Kshatriyas execute those principles and there's a peace in the society. Vaishyas can peacefully earn and grow foodstuffs and they can give everybody food, sustain them. Shudras help everybody and that's how it goes. Simple. It's simple. Uh, so, Brahmanas have a capacity to remove Kshatriyas from their position. It's not that Kshatriyas keep on killing Brahmanas and, and get lost. And that, that happens when kings become corrupt. It happens with Dain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he became corrupt Brahmanas came and finished him off so they have the capacity so that's how it goes this system and that's why uh, Prabhupada, Prabhupada makes a point here but whatever is happening it is due to please the Supreme Personality of God now you might come with a solution okay even without following all this we can please Supreme Personality of God why do need all these I, I mean the society have to see the qualification and engage him according to that. Why to do that? Just chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Give some class, have prasad. But the whole point is, you can do that, but the whole environment will become so stressed. People will fight, devotees will fight, there will be tensions. You will not be able to chant your rounds. Chanting is the only way. And prasadam is the only way. But the whole point is, whether you are able to do it or not peacefully. Because, Anyway, you have to live with devotees. One way is you can leave all devotees and sit, do your own, but then you will not advance. You can advance. I mean, to see, you can say, okay, I can read my books and chant my own rounds. That you can do. But one thing you cannot do without devotees. That without devotees, you cannot develop good qualities. Because 
as how you might say well uh, devotees are bad so how can we develop good qualities but the whole point is you need bad to become good because uh, when you face bad qualities then then is a contrast then you understand what is good otherwise we never understand what is good and in devotee society we we can we can we develop qualities like humbleness tolerance if the people then you know how to be humble if there nobody then what's the point of humble if you're in a forest how do you develop humbleness what do you do you become humble in front of tiger and monkey so <laughs> if you're in a forest whom do you tolerate there's nobody or a man in a man in a home do you give respect even if you don't want to from inside you have to give so it's required so if the society of devotees are required sadhu sang sadhu sang sar shastra kai then you have to learn how to remain you have to live with sadhus and you have to know how sadhus should act all of these sadhus so that um, uh, so that it's a peaceful atmosphere for that varnashram is required all these things are required and that's what prithvi is instructing so we can all uh, learn from this we can practically apply these principles in our in a small congregation wherever you have these principles work everywhere in a congregation in a family in a society in a country in a universe is the same thing which will happen same thing so these principles are all over i mean to say within your body varnashram is going on all right your head legs belly and leg that's varnashram <laughs> head is working as one head over that's what example is given so krishna has designed this material world according to guna karma vibhagasha whole matter and spirit they work according to this laws uh, and that krishna has revealed a secret to us it's up to us to use it properly that's what krishna says and then krishna says if you are happy i am happy that's the whole point that's why krishna says for for doing occupation due to according to talents that will satisfy me because that will make you happy and peaceful and if you are happy peaceful then i am happy and peaceful because then you can devote your life to me come back to me as simple as that so that's the whole idea so okay if there is any questions and comments you can ask me hari krishna shiva prabhu pad ki jai yeah if there is any questions and comments hari krishna prabhu ji if there not pranam thank you so much prabhu ji a uh, very beautiful class so prabhu ji the question is uh, throughout bhagavad gita there is a uh, 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 like there is a push from the lord to uh, elevate oneself to the mode of goodness uh for example mm. it is that if the mode of passion instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting then one can be saved from, from the degradation of wrath by spiritual attachment so yeah yeah sir yeah. this sense how does it apply for practical uh duties mm. of brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra because we we say to everyone that you know you read books you chant and you develop mode of goodness then you know you can yeah yeah okay okay i understand your point you see the point uh, there are two types of mode of goodness uh, one one mode of goodness is very general level another mode of goodness is specific so when we are talking of varnashrama brahman chatri vaishya shudra we know brahman is primary mode of goodness chatri is in primary mode of passion vaishya is in mode of passion and ignorance Shudra is in primary mode of good ignorance, primarily in mode of ignorance. It doesn't mention that Shudras don't have mode of goodness because all gunas are mixed with each other. The mode of goodness also has passion and ignorance. Ignorance also have a portion of goodness, but primarily they are working in that mode. Now, uh, now uh, that is very specifically we are talking specific goodness, specific ignorance, specific. Uh, 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 passion but then there is a very general way of talking there is uh, there is something called general goodness and general ignorance so when we say that everybody in kali yuga is a shudra then we are talking about general ignorance people are ignorant of uh, supreme percent of god at of vedic knowledge and uh, they don't have good qualities in general people don't have in this age so we are talking about general ignorance but uh, and and when we are talking about general goodness that means 
uh, that means uh, everybody should devote their life to god everybody should be clean they should read books and they should chant the holy names and uh, so so that's why shrimad bhagavatam defines general qualities of a human and specific qualities of a human you read bhagavatam 11th canto general qualities of human uh, krishna says to uddhav there are there are, i think 30 qualities something which every human should have and there it comes every every human should be have control of senses is the same thing they are talking what brahmanas have control of senses they should be knowledge they should get knowledge they should be clean simple truthful and they should devote their life to god now you might think well why bhagavatam is saying every human should have all qualities because these are brahmanical qualities but the whole point is every human should have these qualities in different proportion brahmanas will be more sense controlled it's not that shudra should not be sense controlled if he is not sense controlled how he will serve others or uh, he, uh, so it's not that shudra should not be truthful if he is not truthful then he'll cheat he'll speak lies then nobody will keep him in service it's not that shudra are not supposed to read books otherwise if he doesn't read books then uh, how he will advance in spirituality it's not that he should not chant so it's not that he should not remain clean because he has to keep everything clean for the masters he should know what is cleanliness but but the whole point is degrees are different brahmana excels in all this shudra doesn't excel he know these things but he can't excel that's why he when he's with he's serving brahmana shatriya he's learning from them so these are the uh, so 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 their general quality but then when you come specific then it becomes very different specifically we talk about brahmanas they are more focused on cleanliness truthfulness control of senses for shudras they are more focused on serving others so you see the point brahmanas are the head everybody follow brahmanas because brahmanas have qualities which are very conducive to spiritual life control of mind and senses are required for spiritual life reading books are required for spiritual life but because everybody cannot do they, we say okay role model is brahmanas so that slowly when you associate when you respect them and you associate with brahmanas you start developing their qualities and those qualities become favorable for devotional service when prabhu says it's not necessary to become like ramanuja and madhava it's not necessary to become like a brahmana uh, to uh, to get those qualities 100% you can get those qualities uh, 20 30% 40% whatever is required but you should be sincere in acquiring those qualities prabhu says you should be open and frank so if you are sincerely associating with brahmanas absorbing those qualities which are which are very general qualities which everyone should have then everybody advances nicely so but uh, brahmanas will always specifically brahmanas uh, brahmanas are mode of goodness specifically otherwise everybody has a mode of goodness i mean shudras have mode of goodness but not in the same proportion so that's how the division is general qualities specific qualities in general qualities uh, all brahmanical qualities are included but they are not so condensed and not so laser focused they are general everybody should practice according to their adhikar so general qualities include brahmanical qualities uh, which should be practiced by everybody to how much extent they can and specific qualities when we talk then they are different then they are brahmanical qualities kshatriya vaishya and shudra so that's how the system is or if you want to speak in another way uh, general mode of goodness everybody has to come in mode of goodness generally uh, okay but but the degrees of mode of goodness can be different the depth and the insight can be different and it it will be different but everybody has to do because without coming in order of goodness you can't realize supreme sense you got it and supreme personality of god doesn't want you to come in 100% in order of goodness supreme personality of god wants you to practice mode of goodness but with sincerity how much you can do the best you can do and that becomes conducive to spiritual life but when we talk about specific mode of goodness a focused laser focused mode of goodness that is bhavana and others are in different modes passion ignorance but they try to develop mode of goodness in a broad sense and that's that's how uh, everything is nicely harmonized is it is it okay yes prabhuji thank you so much 
so we should inspire everybody to read books to have control of senses control of mind now the practical insight into this is we inspire everybody to read books control senses and blah 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 and remain clean but then you might uh, but then of course different people have different natures some are brahmanical some are shudra some are kshatriya so although we instruct this you don't expect people to do everything 100% okay control senses but we don't expect a shudra type person or maybe children suppose you you instruct children children are like shudras scripture says it, uh, they are not much intelligent and much wise in up not mature first of all so so we but we instruct them okay control your senses read books chant remain clean uh, but the whole point is because we know that their shoes are we don't expect that they will follow perfectly what we expect from children is that if they are trying their best we are happy am i right then we are happy so similarly here we we instruct everybody but we should know what person has what nature and then according to that you help that person or you give mercy if he is trying his best you are happy according to his adhikar uh but but if a person who is brahmanical who is very intelligent and he is not reading then then you are not happy then you say well you have more adhikar and you should read more you should understand more so that's how we do so practical take is of this is people have different natures but we inspire them to come in mode of goodness as brahmanas do what do brahmanas preach i mean to say brahmanas give knowledge to satriyas vaishya and shudra what they preach they will preach the same thing remain clean control your senses and read books i mean to say what else is there to preach but they know that different people are different stations of life different nature so they act accordingly and they help accordingly they don't push people more than the adhikar and then they're satisfied if they're working according to their capacity and they give mercy and that's what how krishna works as the purpose says you don't have to become like great dhamuna jain or these people and that's how system works so that's how we should work we might be instructing so many devotees in so many things but then you have to understand what his capacity and instruct them according to that So we might be telling control senses read books but then we have to understand some people cannot read books more than required okay you always inspire people read more read more but at the same time if if you find person is doing his his best then you also encourage him to do more and maybe applaud him but if a person who is brahmanical and if he is not reading books then you encourage him but you don't applaud him you have to scold him so that's why this dynamics is important to understand a general mode of goodness a specific mode of goodness brahmana is in specific mode of goodness all other all other stations of life they are in general mode of goodness uh, so shudra is in specific mode of ignorance uh, um uh, satriyas in specific mode of passion satriyas might have a, a a very broad uh, uh, satyas might have a general mode of ignorance in the sense people anybody is born in kali yuga they are in ignorance am i right because they are in bodily concept of life so bodily concept of life is a general mode of ignorance which everybody is there but specific mode of ignorance that shudra and uh, satya is not there so that's how we divide specific modes general modes specific qualities general qualities and that's how the system works that's okay yes so we thank you so much like uh, it's really eye opener and uh, now we, we understand why from bhagavatam there's a chapter that general um uh, qualities and specific qualities in regard to varnashrama thank you prabhu ji yeah hari krishna okay so hari krishna prabhu ji dhanyawad sir na hari krishna Thank you, Prabhu Ji, for such a beautiful class. I have a question from one of the devotees, Prabhu. Um, he, um, in Varnashrama Dharma, where women sit, Prabhu, that was a question from one of the devotees. Uh, what, what? What? Can you please repeat? Where, where women? Women. Women goes in Varnashrama Dharma. I mean, like, what is the women importance, or where does women sit in Varnashrama Dharma? Well, well, the importance of women in Varnashrama Dharma. is in is to is to is to actually create peace 
and satisfaction in the society that's what women's role is very important i mean to say because people are married shudras vaishya kshatriyas they are married uh, even brahmanas are married most of people are married and women are there and uh, this important role because if woman is not peaceful she is not trained she is not controlled in mind then men is unhappy and they are frustrated and they are tensed so they cannot do their occupational duties so in that sense the first thing is woman has to uh Uh, okay so okay fine that that i understand so woman has to woman uh, the the main thing is woman is uh, she has to uh, act in such a way so that family is peaceful that's that's the primary role because families are not peaceful people cannot work in society males cannot work properly they cannot take proper decisions and uh, everything will go chaos brahman cannot work as brahmana Shatriya cannot work as Shatriya, Shudras cannot work as Shudra, Vaishya cannot work as Vaishya. So, woman is doing something internal job, which is very important, a foundational job. And the second thing, woman's role is, uh, woman's role primarily is within the family, by the way, not much outside. And, uh, I mean to say, unlike the modern world here, women are working outside, but it's primarily in the house, and they're happy, more happy if they are in the house, and more protected. that's the whole idea uh, so that that's one of the roles another role of woman is to actually uh, cultivate good qualities in their children and also to and also to uh, to uh, to satisfy the relatives and husband and people whom she meet in the society uh, with good qualities for example one of the good qualities of a woman is shyness i mean to say a woman should act like a woman the greatest quality of a woman is shyness these qualities she has to cultivate womanly qualities and not manly qualities if if she starts to cultivate manly qualities then everybody is a man i mean man is a man woman is a man then then how does how does system go i mean to say they don't attract each other uh, they don't attract there is no attraction and then there are divorces so women should cultivate man womanly qualities like shyness or oh, sweet words and uh, women should be like that uh, because uh, you see the point uh, because man is little harsh by nature uh, so women a uh, woman balances those things otherwise if both are like acting like men then they'll fight and there's no balance and then how children can be raised properly so woman does a job of consoling and uh, she's always uh, i mean to say as a woman she should be very much sense controlled and mind controlled because you need mind control to uh, to actually sustain the family and that kind of training was given by the mother of the woman in previous times and the and, and, and woman has to cultivate a lot of tolerance because there are relatives there is father in law there is father and there is husband she is playing so many roles as a wife as a mother as a sister and uh, um, and uh, also uh, simultaneously she has to play that's the whole idea so she has to be very dynamic and she has to have all these good qualities that's what woman is working on to cultivate good qualities and to give this good qualities to their children and in the family Uh, so that people uh, people can work nicely uh, so in that sense women's role is very important there but the but the whole point is everything goes in the family she is not working in the society otherwise society becomes corrupt she is not so much protected there a woman wants to preach she can preach among women that's okay i mean to say even women also i mean to say women might also have brahmanical kshatriya and vaishya even qualities different women are different some women are leader type okay fine so you lead other women and you help them to cultivate these qualities of shyness and tolerance and train them how to be in a uh, live in family life and if you are uh, for example if you are a vaishya type woman i because 
because uh, because women who are coming from vaishya parivar they have this quality of vaishya isn't it? because they are seeing all the males and everything money is there so they have this knack there so if it is there uh, then no problem then save money in the family uh the family uh, things are required the to save money and then teacher money and all these things she can work like that she can advise other females how to save money how to run the house properly and for future so that all these things can be done women's role is also to actually protect the male in the sense not allow him to fall down that's some that's the meaning of patni patni is a is a is a patni word means who who uh, who who doesn't allow his husband to 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 become patit patan 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 comes patni now the wife a male he has patan he falls down the <laughs> patni like she protects him from falling down from 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 becoming corrupt isn't it that's how it goes like wife like if wife is there then male is like be careful you know i can't do things so so he doesn't become wild he doesn't become beast you know like he can go to any extent so wife protects the husband in that sense protects the child so it's such an important role as a wife and so she has to work on herself and the family and it requires a lot of time lot of responsibility is there uh, but if she goes out and she starts working like male then she is also trying to do those things then th- then she can't play his role, her role properly and everything gets spoiled so god has given different very responsible roles to everybody and if they do their roles everybody is happy and she, if she has feminine qualities the male is also attracted to the female and the female is attracted to male because of manly qualities and then they can live together nicely it's a good combination that's the role of females in varnashram system in very general sense that's all boss thank you prabhu ji thank you so much so prabhu uh, in uh, extension to this um, question like in which like what is a varna and ashrama of women means like is there anything separately or like if it is, she belongs to brahmana means she is belonging to varna like that or how do we understand that prabhu oh no uh, no for women uh, ashrama uh ashram is like grahastha what is that ashrama brahmachari grahastha shatriya uh, vanprastha and sanyas for for women uh, for women there is no ashrama for women uh, she is a wife of all them that's all there is no ashrama basically she is a wife Where, uh, uh, if 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 a husband i mean she she lives in the family uh, so for women there is no brahmachari ashram she she is in the household life grahastha and um, there is no vanta there is no sanyas women women there is no ashrama by the way but there is a varna because different women have different qualities that's what i was talking every woman is not the same because they are living entities so according to their qualities they can be engaged within the family life that's how it goes or within the society of females so that's what i was talking a woman who is a brahmanical quality she likes to read and discuss so she can read and tell other females guide them no problem give them lecture mata ji uh mata ji specifically not i mean to say that's what she has to keep in mind so and if she is having kshatriya qualities if she is having management things like for example king's wife they were more of kshatriya quality satyabhama krishna's wife or 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 even if see ram's mother um uh, also that kaushalya yeah and kekai also kekai she had such a quality she actually saved janak maharaj once yes so we know that uh, in her so an emergency they were trained as kshatriyas also so they uh, if they are such a quality then they can then they can manage uh, female society um mata ji then they can be management mata ji programs like that uh, so like that uh, different all in different qualities roles can be done but there is no ashrama for women there is one ashrama krasta is a wife that's also when when she is child uh, she is protected by father and she is protected by husband when she is old she is protected by children she doesn't go for sanyas or one trust she doesn't go in brahmacharya ashram she is in the house she is learning from the mother and the family uh, and that's how it goes 
but but she learns uh she learns women as she learns 64 arts it is there in shastras but she doesn't go to gurukul she learns uh by 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 tradition the mother or maybe mother's friend they are expert in all these arts and they pass on to the child and that's how it goes so uh, it's not that she doesn't learn anything they have to learn so many things 64 arts they have to learn and and if they know these arts so like art arts like for example putting mehndi and you you i mean to say you all learn from your mother I mean, that's art or maybe making flower garlands or maybe maybe how to dance and music females used to learn uh and then uh, and then playing chess females were learning they were playing chess with their husband when he used to come <laughs> they are in the <laughs> or maybe or maybe doing uh, okay she has to learn how to do makeup and science of ornaments uh, uh, uh she has to learn how the art of uh, speaking sweet words and enchanting so that she can enchant her husband like that so there's so many arts so much so many things to learn uh, that she's learning she she's very busy there doing as a job of a woman as a mother and the family that's how she's doing and then she teaches others if she learns as teaches other females that's all boss that's okay thank you prabhu ji for the detailed explanation thank you so much that really helped thank you prabhu hi krishna prabhu um may i ask a question yeah 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 you can ask you can ask okay um well there are two things one is you know with the shyness you know when i think of the word shy i think of a person who you know is a little uncomfortable socially so i'm just trying to understand why that quality is so desirable for a woman to be shy well, i i i don't know for her so can you can you just repeat your question i mean to say why women is required to be shy that's what you are asking well <clears throat> you know i i first defined it as i i first defined shy as socially uncomfortable you know and so no, that's what no, no, like, no it's not like that shyness is a very different i mean to say in in present society nobody understands what shyness also nobody and nobody knows what is shyness matter so shyness is a very different shyness is not that you become that you are in a corner and sitting in a dark and become a yeah. you will know that's not shyness i mean to say it's a very different kind of quality and people who have who have lived in india or, or who have lived in vedic culture they know what is shyness 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 means uh first thing in shyness is that you don't answer back immediately that's first in shyness first thing well, people if you t- tell to people something they just answer back immediately that's what they do but shyness is a quality you don't answer back you you maintain your composure and you think and you don't speak at that time you speak later when it's required now that's one of the component of shyness shyness uh in vedic tradition shyness also means that females were, were 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 not going in the public and then and then exposing themselves i mean to say wearing such kind of clothes what females are wearing now they are like half naked you know so well well you can i mean to say people can argue they, uh, these debates are endless they can argue because because they have not lived in that culture okay uh, we can we can uh, we can wear clothes whatever we want and blah 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 male should be controlled but then the whole point is you have you have uh, you have broken the rules of shyness and i mean to say how can how can then how can then people control themselves it's it's out of question mm-hmm. then you can say they should be controlled but then they can say you should be dressing nicely so that's the whole debate going on in india and all over the world mm-hmm. but let's not go into debate but the shyness means uh, wearing clothes properly and not exposing your body all around that's one other thing in china if you go in india uh, females cannot wear clothes what in western what males females are wearing or in modern society they are shy 
because the whole wealth of a beauty is there now as the wealth of a female is there is there is there is their body isn't it because krishna has given them beauty so so they they preserve this their beauty for god especially for god and their husband that's how it goes so uh that's one of the components of shyness uh, and another component of shyness is obedience uh people uh females were obedient i mean to say they, i mean to say even i mean, it, it so, so so it's not that male is a is, um, so, so it's not male is a tyrant and he's a chauvinistic person he's always ordering females it's not that males have their own 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 duties they were uh, males were taking care of females that's what the vedic society is they were fulfilling desires of females that is the duty of a male to fulfill desires of female and so they used to take care of her um i mean to say um, not uh, so desires which are legible not illegible desires god in scriptures so and the female is acting like that and that's what is shyness uh, so all these components are there in shyness so it's so basically female feels comfortable when she is shy otherwise if she's not shy then she will not un- 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 if, if uh, otherwise so many males are seeing her she is in public and she is always uncomfortable she is always adjusting her clothes and always you know in the pressure people are seeing me how should i behave how should i act and then they keep, then they act in a very artificial way it's not a natural way to act because lust will work and females are very conscious of the fact people are seeing them males are seeing they are very conscious more than males so uh, that that's how they are wired up so uh, they might have been such an uncomfortable situation where people are seeing them in fact by the way because everybody was a devotee in that that time they have devotion not i mean i don't say pure devotee but they had a concept of devotion uh, nobody wanted uh, everybody anybody's attention that's the whole point in vedic culture if if a person gets attention he becomes shy people are seeing me why they're seeing me you know then you become uh, then you become uncomfortable by that not shy but 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 not shy but uncomfortable everybody is seeing me everybody is watching me so the whole point is uh, if, if 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 you they behave in such a way in society and they and they're not shy they're not shy and they they are kind of close they are so dominant then what happens is people are watching them they are watching them and as a devotee if they are devotees they will not feel comfortable but as, as a devotee they will feel very uncomfortable uh, we, we are not the center of attraction center of attraction should be god so shyness real shyness will come when person is a devotee then he can understand that we should not be self uh, people should not see us and think about us people should think about god Uh, so they will not behave in such a way that people people think about them and that attention comes to them and for females you know uh, females you uh, oh you see actually i, w- I was reading a proverb a, a, a proverb so uh, 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 so somebody said i mean there's a recent philosopher he said he said uh, that the uh, that uh, the, uh, that when the girl she turned 14 she understood one thing and she was completely surprised and what she understood understood what she understood that that without doing anything she can attract attention of every everybody <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically lust she doesn't have to do anything and everybody will be watching her because she is having beauty that's what god has given her so it is it, it can be blessings it can be curse also so she has to not expose her beauty so because everybody all attention will come to her and that's anti devotional completely anti devotional so because a devotee doesn't devotee understands this principle so that's why devotees automatically shy females are automatically shy and they don't feel uncomfortable in that because they are very comfortable that yes krishna is happy and people are not uh, people are not watching me i am not the center of attraction they are very comfortable in that but as a non devotee 
there is a problem there then 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 to then to adjust these shine as good qualities it doesn't come it doesn't come easily because wherever there is god there is all good qualities naturally there is no god then things become very complex and naturally people want to be center of attraction they go is thing and then uh, nobody is giving center of attraction and we tell them to be shy then they think you know nobody is thinking about us and we are not and then they then they feel uncomfortable so that is why uh, that is why this system of varnashrama it doesn't work much in a non devotee society it's mess a mess up there they they can't even understand then they will feel uncomfortable but in a devotee society it is they will feel more comfortable when they are shy because then they are fulfilling a spiritual principle and krishna is very satisfied with them so that's the whole problem there so that's why um, i mean there's a humbleness what do you talk about humbleness uh, people if you to ask people to humble in a non devotee society they will say you are making the fools and craps who is humble you have to be smart you have to we have to be on the top am i right so how do you explain humbleness to them so these qualities don't work in in normal and ordinary non devotee society and neither we preach to them all these uh, points first we ask them to become devotee and then automatically these qualities come but in devotee society if you don't have these qualities then again it becomes mess people are not shy then then they try to become center of attraction then the whole spiritual principle is finished so that's how it goes you you got the point there the yeah, one thing is um you know as a devotee you are saying that nobody wants to be the center of attention because everybody wants their attention to go to krishna so yeah yeah so based on that why is the quality of shyness in that respect more desirable for women than for men why wouldn't we also um expect so for, men to be shyness yeah i told you for women because women can attract attention without doing anything yeah she has yeah. got a gift from god her beauty but man is not like that that man man doesn't become center of attraction without doing anything if man doesn't do anything he's a dump he has to do something so that is why uh, shyness is not exactly for males for males there is another quality because if males do something then they become center of attraction so for them shyness is not there for them the quality is basically humbleness more than shyness they have to be humble because when they will do something they will become center of attraction but then they have to be humble enough to tell people see we are these qualities are not due to this capacity is not due to myself it's due to god please worship god don't give credit to me but for women if she doesn't do anything it will come so that's why it, that's why because you see voice of woman is attractive beauty is attractive everything is attractive she she has to simply sit and everybody will be seeing her it's natural it, it it's like children children are center of attraction they're so nice so so it like that so so in that sense oh actually actually they have to close the door i don't know so so uh, so it's about say it's so so that's the whole point okay so go and then um yeah that was very really wonderful for so, for so many years i've been wondering about this wait wait wait, 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 wait can you please pravin prabhu can you close the door yeah i want Can you close the door? Yeah. You can go. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Then. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. That was really excellent um, description of the shyness. Um, yeah. One other thing is um, the um, the the a, when we say that a person is in a particular mode, you know, um, you know, like for example. Uh, 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 you know, f- food in a particular mode has these qualities. Um, charity in a particular in a particular mode has yeah, these qualities. So yeah, when yeah, when a yeah. per- when we say that a person is in a particular mode, you know, you know, we've described the 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 person in the 
when we say a person is in a particular mode, are we referring specifically to the way a person thinks? You know, that's a little bit vague for me. You know, exactly what do we really mean that a whole person is in the most? Because there's so many different aspects to a person. So when we say that a whole person is in the uh, in a particular mode, what is it about the person that we're actually referring to? No, oh, in particular mode, we are referring that he has different kind of talents and qualities. That's what we are referring. Different kind of qualities and talents. That's the particular mode. If in mode of goodness, he has a talent. For him, austerity is a very natural. Reading and writing is very natural. It comes naturally to him. He has his quality, a talent. And his mode of passion, management comes very naturally to him. And fighting comes very naturally to him. And his investor, uh, earning money and dealing with money comes very naturally. So these are very ta- these are some particular mode we are talking about talents and, so then, and some kind of qualities. So 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 if so if you are talking about if you are talking about photo, uh, so uh, so sorry. So if you are talking about uh, food, food in particular mode, then uh, food in mode of goodness naturally will promote these kind of qualities. If you eat food of mode of goodness, you will want to do you will want to control senses. And uh, these 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 qualities will naturally you will be more inspired. Food in mode of ignorance you'll be food in mode of passion will be more inspired to fight. And uh, so that's why Shatriyas were actually ordered to eat food in mode of passion, not in food of mode of goodness. Otherwise they'll not be inspired to fight. But when it comes to food, it works. It works both ways, doesn't it? I mean, I say if you are, if you, if you're, if you're a chacha, you will, you will naturally want to eat. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, it's like that also. But, but the whole point is, uh, but the whole point is because chachiyas previously they were devotees. So because they were devotees, so uh, so they will want to eat food in mode of goodness. Am I right? Because it's mentioned. And this is spiritual life. But at the same time, then they were ordered even to eat food in mode of passion. Otherwise, they will not be inspired to fight, and they will not be able to manage. In that sense, I was saying. Okay, but so when we say you said that, um, you know, people in different modes, they naturally have certain kinds of inclinations or or talents, right? So, but this seems yeah. to refer more to the. Um, Varnas, right? Than than anything else. So when we say a person is in a particular mode, right? It seems like we're we're referring more to the varna. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. When we talk about mode, we are talking about varnas. And according uh-huh. to that, then occupation duties are defined. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's what goes. Okay, I, I, and you said just now. You said, and according to that, then what? And according to that, occupational duties are decided. According to varnas. So oh yeah. Varna is decided. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then according to varnas, then you decide occupation. Okay. Guna, and. Guna karma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, in in on this topic, there's 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 um where does ashram part fit in, or does it at all? What's that ashram word? You know, on this topic of 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 how of what determines a person's mode, right? Like we just yeah. said that, yeah, we just said that is 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 basically based on one's varna, right? So, oh, so, so, so then according to that, then you decide ashram. <sighs> Afterwards, you, your varna should. Determine your ashram. Yeah, 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 right. Because 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 if you are in uh, because the shudra because he's in mode of ignorance, I mean that's why the shudra is that's a varna, and then you decide the ashrama. And so shudra, what is ashrama? Is only ashrama is nista. He cannot be in vanpras sannyas and brahmachari. Directly goes in nista because 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 he's not that intelligent by nature. 
so he is not sent to gurukul in brahmachari ashram he can't learn things uh, so he directly enters gastha so a uh, a uh, uh, so if, so if a person is a vaishya varna so mm-hmm. so he goes a uh, vaishya then goes to gurukula uh, sorry to brahmachari ashram and there he trained uh, mostly in vaishya uh, arts in agriculture in earning money and then then he comes to grahastha but then beyond grahastha he doesn't go he doesn't go in one percent in yas but that is it and shatriyas then go still one percent he can go to one percent yas and like that so like that then you decide ashram and then what uh-huh. you do in ashram are that they decide according to mm. okay okay so good yeah yeah thank Hare you so Krishna. much mm. Hare Krishna So Hare I think, Krishna. Uh, yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I think Mataji, we'll, yeah, we can just uh, end up here. Thank you. Also. Uh, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. I just had a quick question. You might want to, I just have yeah, yeah. a sentence. Uh, you were mentioning uh, about the fact that, uh, about the women, the shyness and other things. And you mentioned that uh, mm. they need to preach in the, to the Matajis only. So I was just wondering because uh, here uh, we do see Mataji's uh, under the instructions of the Guru, uh, um, Siksha Guru, they, they are preaching here uh, among all, pe- I mean, in the Pakti Viksha programs. So how do we understand that? I mean, it's yeah, not only you're right. I mean to say, uh, yeah, you see the point uh, till, I mean to say it is happening. uh because till yet uh, varnashrama system is not introduced but it is not so conducive i mean to say it ca- it is going on but we have to uh, bring a system and change the system because uh because how do you do that I, uh, it's it's not that conducive to spiritual life and that is why i have seen uh, i mean this it can go other way around also but i have seen uh, Uh, mataji is giving lectures to male male prabhus and males are sitting and then mataji is preaching and then there are big problems there so uh, it's not that vedic system doesn't allow that it's not so conducive um uh, it's happening uh, because still that system is not introduced when prabhu says we have to bring so many things in our movement Uh, we, uh, so we have to boil down the milk uh, so some changes has to be brought on practical level and that is more con- much more conducive if if mataji speaks to mataji that will be much 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 more nice nicer otherwise then then the whole problems of uh, there are so big problems then yeah so in this platform mataji is preaching okay you can continue man to say that's fine but uh, slowly i think when the system comes overall in society in a strong society and then slowly things might change that's all uh, that's what i can say another question prabhu ji a quick one like you mentioned about the shyness part i'm just trying to clarify the perceptions like i'm at least i'm trying to understand myself now uh, prabhu pan mentioned also when we go uh to temple or we're going other way other places we need to dress up nicely uh, even to the temple we should dress yeah. up nicely for krishna now we are we can do with that consciousness but then that can be also perceived oh, no. that you know yeah yeah uh, yeah so no, you know you're so, trying to attract uh, so, the so, other males because other males yeah you're right you're right so you're right so uh, so 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 uh, so dressing up nicely uh that that is that's what i told you because we we never lived in vedic culture so we don't understand what what but meant by dressing up nicely dressing up nicely in vedic culture if you go to any god mandal if you go to any shri sampraday madhva sampraday they dress up very nicely but they are not at all center of instruction master center of attraction i mean to say because dressing up nicely means uh, dressing up nicely means uh, covering your body that's what it means and not uh, and not uh, uh, wearing uh, very colorful dresses colorful sarees and that's what natural devotion says we should not wear attractive uh, clothes, uh, clothes with attractive with colors attractive. in the temple and uh, so 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 especially colors which are red bright red it is it, it is so so using natural devotion bright red color is not allowed in temples so because the whole point is 
don't wear things which are very attractive colors cover your body properly and uh, that is what in, what is dressing up nicely means so when you come to the temple people when people see females they they have a sense of of actually um, what do we say mm. goddess not ordinary female the whole the whole consciousness uh the whole respect comes for the female and consciousness becomes pure by seeing her and then she's not center of attraction that's all then nobody is really bothered about so if you go to i mean to say if anybody wants to know what is dressing up nicely then then they can go to madhva sampradaya shi sampradaya and especially in brahmanical uh families and you see they are they, they are not wearing gorgeous dresses not wearing attractive colors they mostly wear white and those colors uh, white yeah most old females wear white but young females are not white but but the colors are not so flamboyant and they don't really show their body parts and they don't really do so much makeup it's a very simple since it's a very simple dress so that they look very simple that's how most of the brahmanical families come to temple you ask any shri vaishnava how they go to temple not now the previous generation now they have forgotten their whole thing that's the meaning of dressing up nicely now you know we have our own definitions of dressing up nicely i mean to say if you if 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 uh, uh, say if some hollywood actor actress if she is reading prabhupad books and if she reads prabhupad says in the temple you should be dressing up nicely and going to for krishna then what she will wear and she will wear her i don't know what she is going to wear her flamboyant dress and she will go to temple and then people say what's happening what you are you are what you are wearing and she say well i wear the same thing in in movies and it's so attractive to people so it should be attractive to krishna so that's my definition of dressing nicely so that's the whole point because we are we are cut up from the culture we have our own definitions of shyness and dressing up nicely but prabhupad was coming from that culture and prabhupad wrote this books and then somebody who is there he can explain who had actually seen that and that is the books bhagavat has to be bhagavat bhagavat has to be understood by bhagavat people who actually followed it people who were there in culture they can tell you and i have seen in, in i have seen in god mandal in bengal in shri sampradaya madhva sampradaya these brahmanical families beautiful they are they are dressing up nicely in that sense and nobody they are absolutely not at all center of attraction and when we see them we we actually remember god because they look like goddesses they they look so pure in that sense so d- dress should should actually express purity and serenity and peacefulness and not it's not excite mode of passion and that is attractive to krishna otherwise it's not attractive that's how it goes that's how it's i mean to say people have to see and they understand things that's all Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Okay, so I Thank think... Thank you, Prabhuji, once again for the beautiful class and very nice question and answer session, Prabhu, and we are waiting for tomorrow's session again. Back uh, your class will be tomorrow, so we are going to hear from you again tomorrow, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Let us all offer obeisance to Prabhuji. And all Vaishnavas, Vancha Kalpa Taro Pya Shri Pipa Sindhu Pya Eva Chapatita Nam Pava Nebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Nanta Koti Vaishnav Vrindu Ki Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai His Grace Keshavananda Prabhuji Ki Jai Thank you so much Prabhuji Thank you Prabhuji